Hey, hello to all my peeps in North America, Carm Capriato Town Hall Academy webinar. Why speak to fifth graders? <laughs> Golly. Uh, well, yeah, we have to explain it. Yes, we have to bring our passion here. But if this is not just one more episode about uh, fixing our problem of the shortage of technicians that we have in our industry, then uh, then then we're we're wasting our time and our breath here. But please hang in there with us. Enjoy the discussion with my panel. I want to bring it on here. Uh, Craig Noel. Hey, man, how you doing, man? I'm doing PG keen. Can't wait for the topic today. Yeah. Uh, CEO, Sun Automotive, Springfield, Oregon, four stores, loves to get in front of students. Absolutely do. Yeah, this is mm. a passion of mine. Yep. Uh, Bill Haas is with us, past business manager of NACAD and, of course, uh, lead guy at Haas Performance Consulting. Hey, Bill. Good afternoon. How is everybody doing? Glad to glad to have you here. Now, NACAT was the North is the North American Council of Automotive Teachers, and Bill was a, a previous past business manager. Been to one of the events yes. where all the all the teachers come in, and uh, and again, Bill would I would say that Bill understands and gets that whole education piece. And um, we're waiting on our great friend Andy Fifick, CEO of Rad Air, ten store franchise, Cleveland area, and. Uh, uh, Tracy, put up that picture of that episode that Craig and I did together, uh, how to build relationships with students in school with Andy and and his right-hand man, Bill Snow. That was really a great episode. I encourage you, episode 760. So if you want to get into a mode, everyone, a mode of I've got to get out there, I've got to talk, uh, I've got to be in with students, I don't think you need a fancy PowerPoint. I think you need the passion from your heart. And I think that's all it's going to take to go out there. I know Bill's got some great advice. So does Craig on actually what to do. So this is not only a little bit of a, of a why we need to go out and talk to students, but this is also going to be a how to do it and, and how, how to bring your passion. Now, before we get too, too far, let's give a high five to our great sponsors here on the Town Hall Academy. You know, more cars equals more money. So the faster you check them in, Pump out an accurate estimate and move them through the bay. All the better. Get shopware.com for a smooth ride through every step of the day. And hey, did you clean the fuel tank the last time you replaced a fuel pump? Contamination buildup in the tank not only impacts the vehicle's performance, but it can also damage the fuel pump. Clean the fuel tank in five minutes with Delphi Technologies Fuel Tank Cleaning Tool. Learn more at Delphi Automotive. Or hey, if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and thanks. I said that web address wrong. It's DelphiAftermarket.com. Uh, I got a million things that I, I want to talk to the world about before we jump into the episode, and then, and then maybe Andy can join us. Apex extended the deadline for the service awards, the shop owner the technician and the service advisor of the year till next Wednesday, one week, AAPEX show.com forward slash service awards. So it's, uh, it's going to be extended by one week. Uh, that's the seventh. And I'm wearing, I'm wearing the, my AST shirt because Tracy and I are going to be at ASTE and that's Thursday, September 29th through Sunday, October 2nd. Boy, I sure do hope to see you there. If you're if you're heading out, please stop by our studio, which is kind of right on the main floor, main in the main lobby area. I'd love to see you. Uh, as we get ready to dive into this episode, let me preface this with the passion that we've had about these episodes. I showed you Andy's, but uh, we also did an episode with my son, who's a guidance counselor at the Ready Academy at Sweet Home High, and. Um, of course, with, with Tracy and Matt, we really had a, a very emotional episode as we talked to students and teachers about the whole internship and shadowing program with the Big Picture program. And in the beginning of the video, guys, if you've seen it, I hope I, I say, hey, all you got to do is just go to the school, open the door. Obviously, you got to check in. You got to have ID in the schools today. You just, you know, it's just you just can't go in guns blaring. And uh and the funny part of the video, guys, is I walked in and I said, hi, look at <laughs> my name's Carm Capriato and you are. And he goes, and it's my son because the principal wasn't there that day. And Matt looks at me and he says, hi, dad. 
<laughs> and I, I was trying to make this show how you introduce yourself to someone. <laughs> And Matt, Matt says, hi, Dad. And I turned to the camera and I says, he broke the code. That was that was fun. And we also did a big picture with it with another counselor named Karen Monaco. And so we've we've really contributed a lot. Let me let me find that graphic just to show it to you quickly. Uh, the big picture program. So we are committed to, I guess, you know, as it is advancing the aftermarket, you could take that graphic off now, guys. We're we're we realize more than ever that with the six figure shortage of technicians that we have to have, that we've got to do this ourselves. And there's one other thing I have to mention. I did an episode yesterday with a really cool guy, Mark Byrne, and he's from mentormentee.com. And they have got the answer on how to really pull this together. Even if you've got a great apprentice program, right? We know that we need someone to guide a young person through the chairs. And this is high tech stuff. It's all online. All the data is there. You can access it, you know, on apps and on desktops. And they even have an assessment program. He says, well, really, I got a couple of great guys. I wonder if they would be good mentors. Well, they have an assessment program to let you find that out. And that episode should be out within two or three weeks. Okay, even though we're still waiting on Andy, which is a shame that Andy can't get, uh, we just found out he can't get some some internet access. Hey guys, Bill, you've got a lot of experience on um, on these young people and the excitement and the energy that they have. Well, they do. I mean, they have tremendous energy. That was the, I, I mean... That was sort of the defining moment for me. The first time I went and talked to elementary students was I'd talked to high schoolers before and you can't, you can't go to an elementary school like you are prepared to talk to high school students because it's night and day difference. And what I found was these elementary students have so much energy. And so the real challenge, I think, in, in preparing to go make your presentation or just have your talk with the elementary students is you better match your energy. You can't just come in as the stuff shirt. I'm a mechanic. I'd like to talk to you about what my life has been like and what a career could be. And you, you've got to really ramp up your game. Um, you've got to match their energy because, you know, we're pretty, at this point, we're pretty far removed from having young people at home, young children anymore. So we kind of forget what that was like, right? But that's exactly what's going on, you know, with those fifth graders in, in the classroom, in their seats is they don't sit still very long. They got a <laughs> lot of energy. And so you need to match that energy. That's part of making that connection with, with that group of students. It really yeah. is. It's so different than than talking to middle school or high school. You know, I, I, I'm a grandparent of a four-year-old, so I, I, we've got time to, to look at my young grandson, Donovan, in the fifth grade. But I remember the fifth grade. I have one of the best stories of my elementary career from fifth grade. If we have time, I'll tell it later. But Craig, are they, do they have uh, cell phones? Are they digital, extremely digital? In regards to the youth today, they're extremely, extremely techy. That young? That young? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And here, here's the, you know, it's funny because I, 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 I responded real quick to the, to the topic today. And, I, you know, I think we have to kind of set the stage a little bit for why we're here, which is, you know, there is a, there is a huge disconnect between what used to be plan B for Johnny or Joan uh, and 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 really, what is a viable career? Now, the the difference between those two, as you just mentioned in regards to energy, is that the one thing that they have now over us as kids is their technical their technological advancement and ability to pick up things so quickly. So what we're left with is kind of that on hands nuts and bolts exposure. But we talk about exposure, and the one thing that is interesting is. You know, we, we say, let's talk to fifth graders, and you're absolutely right. And it's because, you know, what, three decades ago, you know, you started to see, you know, uh, metal shop, auto shop, wood shop, all that stuff go away. And so to expose those young kids who aren't scholastic achievers, me, I was one of them. I wasn't the scholastic achiever. I like to know how things work. 
Well, you know, all it is is a, is a matter of turning the light switch on for them to understand what a viable, awesome career this can be for them. And to Bill's point, the, the energy is off the charts. And if you could capture that into somebody that has got, you know, fantastic spatial visualization, you're off to the races. It kind of reminds me, Bill, Craig, that if you look around you in your shop, you're the you're the owner and you're buying this high tech equipment and your guys got these scopes out and they're and they're on the Internet and they're looking for information and, and we, it, it grew on us. But I don't think the world has, saw that happen. And And I think to one of your points, Bill, is the stories that we have to tell. We have to tell stories and, you know, to your point about the technology, right? So for us, <clears throat> we adapted to that. I mean, when I started in my career in this industry, there wasn't a scan tool. No. <laughs> there weren't computers. There, You know, computers, my goodness. Well, there were, yes, there were computers, but computers weren't really practical in terms of helping you find service information. We were buying paper manuals. My gosh, I, I remember the library of, of the Mitchell manuals that came in volumes. And so when you wanted information, you'd go through page after page trying to find that piece of information that you needed, that specification or that that diagram or that procedure. And, and so we adapted to it, right? So we learned how to be, become digital. We learned how to use resources on the internet. Well, that's their world. So when you go talk to fifth graders today, that's their world. So the stories for me are, some of it has to be the show and tell. So it's not about, you know, I don't know what anybody's perception is today about what is an auto mechanic, what does an auto mechanic do. But when you do the show and tell, and when you walk in and you, you have a scan tool, and you go, so this is what I use to make a living. This is what I use to have fun at work. Oh, wait, now you've got their attention. I can go to work and I can have fun too. Yeah, work should be fun. But now the scan tool and you go, yeah, see, and, and they're like, every one of them is in a digital world. They're all, they all have either a computer, a laptop, a, a, a tablet, a a smartphone or something or and all, all of, of a sudden it's like, man, or yeah, or all of them. And, and all of a sudden it's like, well, that's just like what I do for fun. Now I can, I'm relevant. Now the, the fun is connected to work. You know, I can, I can only imagine Craig going, going to a, a fifth graders and, and doing this raise your hand thing. I, I got some questions to ask you. And, and you know, if you put your if you put your thinking cap on and you get you just get down and, and and say what would turn on a group to even think or consider or repeat this message back to mom and dad or their <laughs> friends that we're gonna talk about, you know, who, who loves computers, who has computers, and you keep going down this line of technology and LEDs and I can't imagine you'd have them with their mouths gaping open as you describe a day in the life of an automotive technician. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and Craig, to, you made something that was so powerful. I got to go back to it. You said the plan B. And I think the strategy of, um, uh, that you're trying to make when you're talking to fifth graders is you're trying to solidify plan B to plan A. That is correct. That is the point of getting in front of them because it needs to be the same for the right individual. Look, I'm not going to be one that's going to thrive on, you know, uh, 18th century French art. It's not going to work. But to those individuals where the light switch does get turned on, and that's the exposure we're after, if you go into a classroom, and this is what I've done multiple times. So you'll go in and you'll take your phone, right? And you'll talk to them. You'll say, hey, guess what, everybody? Get your phones out because we're going to we're going to talk about how powerful just your phone is. And I'll throw out a specific code, PO0350. Hey, <laughs> just Google this. What is it? Oh, okay. Now you've established what it is. Now I want you to go to YouTube and I want you to tell me what it looks like. And we talk about a visual description of this, you know, blender actuator motor. I said, now you've just captured two easy points in 30 seconds 
about how easy it is to uncover what you will be doing. So now we just need to understand, you know, the technicality of getting there. But to to show them how relatively easy in their world um, dealing with the technology of today is, and then to understand that they can get right out of, you know, some apprenticeship programs internally of mine or whoever, you know, you're, you're potentially looking at an eighty thousand to hundred thousand uh, dollar a year job without a. Uh, uh, College loans, let's talk about that, right? So, hmm. you know, there's some real reward there when you start to trigger, you know, what really uh, activates their brain and, and they can put plan A and wait, plan B is A now. I'm like, this is an option. This could be something very viable for me. That's that's it. You know, it kind of started, interestingly enough, is, you know, when we lost auto shop, metal shop and all that stuff, at the same time, there was this transition, you know, back in the 80s and 90s when we started to get technical and computers came out, you know, people were hobbyists of that realm and people started to not be hobbyists of the automotive world. And believe it or not, you know, when dad and and his son were out at the car show and talking about the hobby, that was another way to kind of get introduced into the field. Well, so that's even kind of the attrition of that has also affected the exposure. So between technology and the changes and where everybody's gone the last three decades, here we sit with this wonderful problem, I call it, because all you got to do is get in front of the young ones and turn the switch on. I, wow. You know, that, Craig broke the code of what we're here for, and that's how to do it. Give them a trouble code and let them totally be engaged within the first five minutes of that of, of that presentation. And you also need to tell the teacher to do it at the same time. <laughs> and you need to be sure that the principal, hey, would you, would you join us? Kids would probably love to have you. Absolutely. You know, and then, and then when you make it fun at the same time, and that's the trick, you got to make it interesting because you start to paint the picture. So, you know, this code that's given to you, it's kind of like telling the um, postmaster or the uh, mailman your zip code. Now the trick is you got to find your house. So really between all of those tools that you learn on the job, you try to distinguish whether or not a rat jumped in the trunk and chewed the wires, or you really have a faulty part. And that's the fun part. Every day is a, uh, an adventure. It's an it's a investigatory, you're a CSI, you know, you're, a, you're really trying to look at a, a crime that's been committed on the car. And, you know, you try to just kind of turn it into something fun and, and they, boy, they are engaged. They're firing off all sorts of different questions at you at that point. Just to motivate people's think, uh, when I was in fifth grade, I wanted to invent the first ever flying car. And I was so crazy about it that my dad said, you got to go talk to our, my friend Bob. Just get this off your chest. Go, go talk to him. Let's see what Bob thinks. And Bob comes over to the house. He was, he was like, he was psychologizing. He was just sitting down. Car, tell Bob all about your idea. And I says, it would have this, and it's going to do this, and it's going to do that, and all this. And Bob says, well, those are all great ideas. He's trying to, you know, assure me that this is nothing that I don't think that could ever happen someday. Come on, that was in the 60s. No one had a clue, right? Andy's with us. How cool There's is Andy. that? Hey, hey, welcome, hey, Andy. Hey, Carm. Good to hey, see Craig. you. Let me Hey, Andy. Let, let, so let me finish my story. Why not sit down with fifth graders and, and, and say, um, I don't know if the Jetsons are still out today, but, you know, there are so many movies or cartoons or, or shows that show flying anything. And you know what? You could put up your hand and say, we're going to work on them someday. <laughs> and, you, and you're not going to be wrong. Yeah. So, Andy, just to catch you up. Craig, we, we were just chatting, getting in front of fifth graders and then offering them, get, engaging them and giving them a, a trouble code to look up on their phone and then go out into Google and type it in and, and let them see the see a video on on the trouble code and show them that we're in this computer world where the information's plentiful. But once you get that, then now you put your white lab coat on and hang out with your tablet or your smartphone and you fix the car. Welcome, Andy. Are you hearing me? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, sorry about that. I was traveling today, and I had to go to two different restaurants to get internet. Oh, well, good <laughs> to have. We're so happy. Andy Fiffick, CEO, Rad Air.
10 store franchise Cleveland area. And I showed you the picture of that episode we did with him earlier. Yeah. Oh, so no. uh, Sorry, catch I'm... us up to speed. Uh, you know, I know that you care to tell people, you know, by, by the way, uh, Craig mentioned just earlier, Andy, just to get you caught up that, you know, every parent has plan A's for all their kids, but then there's a plan B. And that is what you said, working with your hands and, you know, maybe being a little debt, college debt free. And, and you nailed it. Working with your hands is uh, is so rewarding. And, you know, I think so. And, and I and I'll Craig and Bill will agree with me on this one. When, when you do a job and you nail it and you get it right for the client, that satisfaction is huge. You know, your endorphins go up. I mean, you, you get it right. And, and the harder the job, the more that reward is. Uh, you know, I have a seven-year-old grandson. He just started first grade. Uh, he got, you know, they held him back because of the, w- the way his birthday was. And, and, of course, with COVID, they really wasn't doing school at that time. But I'm already talking to him about a career path. You know, so, so fifth grade may be actually too late already uh, to do that. And, Carmen, as we spoke before, I was on our governor's task force on how to get more more people involved and more students involved in in the trades, not just you know the, our end of the field. And we found the biggest uh, hurdle to it was the the counselors at school and the preconception the parents had about kids working with their hands. Amen to that. Yeah, I mean, and and there's some kids that are just not cut out for college, you know, and and if they have the God given gift to be able to think it and make their hand do it, you know, wherever that ends up being, you know, your carpenter, bricklayer, roofer, you know, technician, you know, uh, you know, a, a copy repair person, you know, if you have that ability to work with your hands, I think the parents do a disservice to their kids, not allowing them to experiment with that. Uh, I would, I'd probably guess Craig and Bill, you were tearing lawnmowers apart, building mini bikes and and, and doing stuff when we were kids because yeah. we weren't like this. You know, we, we, we're out doing stuff and and the society has switched that's not allowing the kids to, to do that or heaven forbid, do something they might get hurt. Well, yeah. and so I'm going to ride Andy's coattails just a little bit there, Kern, because, you know, it kind of touches on what we were talking about, which is this potential stigma that's associated with some of the service trades, but specifically, you know, the automotive industry and the whole, you know, mechanic. And now they're obviously technicians, but let's maybe put it into perspective because we want to try to influence parents, but at the same time, help the kids influence themselves and their parents. And I kind of frame it this way. Uh, You know, the uh, Apollo 13 rocket had 10,000 line codes in it. Today's car has over 100,000 line codes in it. So technically, uh, we are dealing with automotive scientists, are we not? If we could kind of frame it in the way uh, of what used to be considered, oh my gosh, he's a rocket scientist. Well, guess what? The thing you're driving today is actually more technologically advanced than the Apollo 13 rocket. So I would think that your son or daughter may have an exceptional career in regards to what they're working on. And maybe they are an automotive scientist. I love that. Something to think about, isn't it? And maybe we need another, add another letter to STEM. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But you know, it's the kind of thing like Andy's, you know, mentioning about how early do you talk to them? Maybe, maybe fifth grade's not even early enough. And, and honestly, I think what we have to figure out is how do we get there first? How do we get, we, if you get there too late, they've already had, too many influences, right? So if you can get there early enough, and I had an experience, I guess, probably three years ago. Uh, my son is uh, a teacher at elementary school, and he asked me to, to come and speak at career day. And I said, okay, great. I'll come and speak at career day. And he said, but you got to be here all day. And I said, it's all day. And he said, yeah, you're going to talk to every class. And we started with the first graders. And we went through all the first graders, all the second graders, all the third, you know, and I'm like, I was amazed. I mean, first graders, you talk about fifth graders having high energy. You ought to see the energy in in a group of first graders or second graders. But their questions were incredible. They were just their minds. They're so inquisitive. And, And it's like, man, if you can be there to make that first impression, if you can get there ahead of 
whoever else we're competing with. And I think we're competing with everybody. Yeah. First group and, is advantage. And, and you're competing with the parents, which is why this discussion needs to get to the dinner table. Well, absolutely. that's absolutely true. And I think the other thing is the opportunity with being able to go in and speak to fifth graders isn't just reaching the students. You are also reaching the teachers. And I think it was Craig mentioned earlier about the, the guidance counselors or, or Andy did about one of the obstacles is the guidance counselors. Well, the only way you're going to get beyond the, the guidance counselors is to get to the teachers. And when you can get to the teachers and you can create an awareness with the teachers of what these opportunities are like, not what they perceive them to be, but the reality of hearing from a Craig or an Andy that this is what my job is. This is how I do this. This is why I do this. This is why this could be good for you. This, that's how you can start to create a real awareness with the teachers. Well, guys, I, I, I'm going to stop for a moment and then come back with, with what I think is a, a profound, it, it could be a, a roadblock. In, in, in this whole educational system for us. Uh, let's let's thank our great sponsors. You know, when you have the right numbers at the start, you never have to apologize for a revised estimate. With the can jobs and past services, build an estimate that is bang on. That's just one reason to go to my friends at getshopware.com. Hey, when you turn to Delphi Technologies for your chassis needs, quality is always at the forefront material and dimensional enhancements as well as 700 hours worth of salt spray testing goes into each and every chassis part produced visit delphiaftermarket.com and see over 8000 chassis parts that delphi has in stock hey thanks for being here guys i know it's the start of a long weekend i know that the mint juleps are just sitting outside waiting for you to Start celebrating this last holiday weekend of the year. Where did it go, guys? I don't know. I just don't know. But I, I, I know time is going so fast. Let's go back to this whole um, counselor thing, guys, that you brought up. I don't know this to be true. I'd love to believe that it is, that the incentives to be sure that 90%, 95% of all the kids get to a college that weight is off of the counselor's back because it seems like almost every TV program, every show, everything you're reading today is skill trade, skill trade, skill trades. Now we have got to make the noise for automotive. And if not plumbing and electrical and welding and, and, and all that's going to get in the way we have got 250,000 shops, 750,000 technicians in this industry, you know, nearly a million people work in it. If we all marched out there, we there be we have more than plumbers, we have more than electricians. I believe, we just have to march. Well, that's a really great point. And and when you started the show today, you were talking about you were talking about you and Tracy went to the school, the the school where your son works. Correct. Yeah. That's the point. You have to go to the school. Quit waiting for the school to come to you. So it's really, I would implore everybody in this industry to find the opportunity to reach out in your own community and start knocking down those doors and saying, when is your career day and how do I get an opportunity to present at your career day? Yeah. Don't wait for the school to say, oh, we're looking for people to speak at our career day. Put yourself out there. And the other thing, Andy, I know that you believe in this. The message is you got to be a pretty bright student kid to, to, to get a job, uh, you know, a six figure earnings job to, to work in our field. But yeah, yeah, we know that, you know, in the, in the leaders of our industry that are doing this right, they've already been outreaching in their community already. We just need to make the, the step to outreach into the schools. You know, so I, I think the good guys that understand that they need to be part of their community is already there. Uh, but the school part, as Bill said, is so important to get out there. Uh, as you know, I, I, I have a relationship with all the vocational uh, schools in our area. It pays great dividends. We signed two uh, young people up to the GMASEP program this, uh, this uh, next semester that just started last week. And that's mainly because 
I'm in the schools. If you get in there and, and the better part of it is we beat our competition to the punch because the, the car dealership network will sponsor stuff. They will sponsor their waiting room and, and they give them cars, they give them this and they give them that, but they don't give them their time. And that's something we can't afford to, to build a vocational school, a, a nice uh, a nice lounge or a remodel their uh, lunchroom where we get our TV playing our ads on it, but we can't afford our time. Uh, and, and I guess maybe I should re-say that. We cannot afford not to put our time into that because if we don't do it, all the other avenues are going to suck these bright people up right from out from under us. And if we donate our time to the community, it will pay dividends. But it takes a commitment to be out there. 100% true. Uh, I'm going to write Andy's coattails here a little bit. Uh, I know that through the last two years, I've talked with uh, our local 4J district uh, specific to head of counselors. They are th the one thing that's in our, our favor is that they are aware of the demand for the service trades to be a viable um, occupation and potential. They, they are buying into that finally. The, the one thing that there is uh, a problem with is that they, they're not going to have auto shop again. So there is, there is this, I don't, we don't know what to do other than to have you in. And so to Andy's point is hundred percent true. They welcome you in because they're not the expert, but they do want people in to be able to speak at, you know, uh, eloquently about the trades and it's an opportunity for all of us. You're absolutely right. I, I give you an example of how well this works. We were, uh, we sponsored the, the soapbox derby, the right out of here of Akron, Ohio. Uh, we've been down three times talking to different students there uh, that the kids that are, are starting to build their cars. And we're talking about how important your alignment is and weight balance and, and make sure, you know, basically just get the car straight. You know, and, and you want to be a 50-50 weight balance. So we're giving them tips and that. And their, their questions come out, like Bill said, it's amazing. The, the questions that come out of the kids and, and what they think, you know, they think a fireman or what does this and a police officer does that, a nurse does this and that. They don't think about what an auto technician does, you know. So we got to be there, the face that shows them that, hey, we're real viable. We're, we're, we're energetic. We're, we're, I think, an exciting industry to be in because... We're, we're constantly changing. And I look at change always as an opportunity, you know, because if I can master, master the change, I'm ahead of my competition on how I'm going to handle it. But nonetheless, these kids, these kids in these schools, they, they, they want somebody to tell them what's going on and they have the questions to do it. So long story short, a young person walked into our Westlake facility two weeks ago and said, you know, I heard this guy, Bill and Andy, talk over at, at our, the thing for the Soapbox Derby. Are you guys hiring? I'm looking for a job with a company like you. And we hired him. So uh, the, the, the coattails of the involvement goes so long, it's ridiculous. That's the point. My, my God, there it is. The impressions that you can leave that, you know, that six degrees of separation, that whole networking thing starts to happen. And, and I'm inspired by what all of you are saying. And here was my thought. You do your, your, your really cool uh, story tell. Okay, guys. And when you're done, you say that next month on this date at my shop, we're holding a automotive STEM class. We want you to be there. Mm -hmm. You invite the parents, you invite the, and you actually take this one step further and that you actually do a little bit almost hands-on. And I remember uh, Patrick McHugh said, you know, he holds these STEM classes at his place. He's got a great strategy on how he makes it happen. And he took out, he has a scan tool and a BMW and he moves the headlights with the scan tool. And what do you think the kids do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a wow. It's a wow. Yep. So I'm, it's right there for us, but we have to get off our good intentions. Was that nice to say? Yeah. And we have to do it. Andy, why does it work for you? I mean, do you, not only seeding your business, but you're doing it for the industry too. Oh, we have to. I mean, aren't we all the industry? 
I mean, you know, we all need to work together. I mean, you know, in, in our area, we have the North, Northeast Ohio Dealer Association, which is all the car dealers all wrapped up into one. They have their own attorney. They have, they, have, they have their own marketing department. I mean, that's who we're fighting against for these same people. And quite frankly, we need the best of those people because we don't have the manufacturer the, and, the, and all the knowledge of the manufacturer at our, you know, let's, let's say at our disposal. And we also don't have a parts department at our disposal to try repairs. You know, so we need the best of the brightest because we're going to be working on every vehicle, not just one manufacturer. And we all know guys in dealerships. I mean, there, there's I get relationships with many of the dealerships here. And you have that one or two awesome guys at each dealer. Then the rest tend to be parts changers. Yeah. You know, in our shops, we need all great guys because we can't go. Hey, Sam, give me one of those modules. I'm going to try it in this car and see if it fixes it. Hey, Bill, that didn't work. What did you do with the last one that did this for you? Oh, I did this. You know, those guys, they're, they're in there to basically make money and, and repair your vehicle as fast as they can. They're not diagnostic people. There are very few in a car dealership network are true diagnostic. Dig in and find out what really is going on and then fix that root cause. They tend to be more parts changers. Yeah, stop here, change the part. Stop here, change the part. Replace you know, so, with no one good part. Yeah. yeah. And so we, yeah. we need the best and the brightest of that group. So our side of the aisle, we need to band together and get this message out and, yeah. and, and, and look like the sexy place to work and the great place to work. But then you got to walk the walk. If you're going to talk the talk, we got to walk the walk. Hey, I want to come back and uh, it, it, one, one final break. Coming back and do segment C, Craig, I have a really important question I have to ask you. Hey, face it, your car count and your ARO are the first two numbers that tell you where your shop stands. And those are the first two numbers that shop where customers see grow. Get more profits when you get shopware.com. Hey, with over 2,300 SKUs and 95% sales coverage on fuel pumps, Delphi has everything you need to replace your customer's fuel pump from OEM quality pump mod pumps, modules, GDI pumps, and fuel tank cleaning supplies to all kinds of instructional videos. Get started at DelphiAftermarket.com. Okay, guys, a thought that I had. And again, sometimes I always look at the bad side of a discussion. And I know that we've got people that are going to listen to this ad nauseum over months and possibly years. And they're going to say, hmm, it's a little too early. I want them when they're just coming out of high school. And, and I just want to... I just want to tell people, and I know you'll all agree with me, that if we don't start them young, and we just have said possibly fifth grade is a little too late, it's a seed that we're planting. And if we speak to fifth graders, and it takes seven more years for them to come out of school, who knows what the world, their life, our industry is going to be like then, but we planted a seed. And maybe you come back and talk to the sixth graders and they see, oh, man, Andy, I saw you there. You were here last year. What's new? What's different? Right. And you keep going and going and going because ultimately, Craig, you got a formal apprentice program that these people can jump into with no college debt at, at 18 years old. Absolutely true. So if it, I can tell you this, so if it was not for uh, that happening now, seven years ago, uh, I wouldn't have one, two, three, four, five of my current youngest technicians for, for a multitude of reasons. Number one, they're absolutely, they love the company. They're loyal. Um, they appreciate everything that you've given them and given them exposure to. Now, I don't want to frame this as though it's like rainbows and, and, and candy every day. I mean, there's been four of them that just moved on, didn't, didn't like it. And that's just something that we have to deal with. But the ones that did stay, I can imagine myself right now, if I look back and I'm like, well, if I didn't have those five right now, where would I be? Holy smokes. Would we not be like, indeed would be like burning up because we're trying to find these people. What's interesting about this is that you had touched on, you know, fifth graders and freshmen. And this is a long-term investment. It's, it's an investment that will pay off. I encourage everybody to, to prepare 
you know, dig in, but I, I say dig in in the in the buy-in and in the investment because the reward will be well worth it. But I, I will also say this. So, you know, when we're talking about um, uh, bridging that gap and talking about our trades and things of that nature, you know, we want to try to talk to, to parents. And I think that our industry is poised right now in finally a good way because we are so needed right now. I mean, so needed. If COVID didn't expose that with the necessity of trying to fix cars throughout that whole thing, you know, we are an essential business. And now all of a sudden people are looking at us and they're saying, it's going to be a month and a half without my car. Yeah, because right now we are we are operating almost on triage. We are scheduling some maintenance, but we are just dealing with tow trucks and breakdowns and things of that nature. So the need, back to the parents, right, the need for, you know, the youth and, and the people in our trades is huge right now. And I think that's going to benefit us as well. But you're right. We're going to have to invest in in these younger people, and it's going to start early. You got to keep the pipeline full. Yep. I mean, you got to go to this fifth grade this year. You got to go to next year's fifth grade. The following year, you got to go to that fifth grade because that's the only way we're going to keep the pipeline full. So it's a full time job, Andy. I, uh, I see it as a full time part of a full time job. I mean, you know, it just has to be, you know, does it occupy 10, 15 percent of our time? Yeah, that's probably it. You know, but it's part of the full time schedule. You, you have to be active, uh, you know, it, and do the car shows, you know, do anything where you could get your name out there. And and you got to bring the energy, though, too. And you got to bring the pizzazz and you got to bring you, you got to bring the life that we live to it. And, and if you truly believe in it, and, and every guy that sits in our shoe does, you know, they, they do or they wouldn't be doing it, you know, as long as we have done it. Not everybody could, could get out there in front of a group and talk a lot. But you could go to the car shows and circulate your time there. And, and anything I've, I've, I've learned a long time ago, you want to do anything with any organization, when they ask for volunteers, you raise your hand. Yeah, Every yeah. single time you go to school, what do you need? Well, we, we can need help on, you know, Friday nights doing selling burgers at the hot dog stand or, you know, whatever at the ball game. Oh, I can help you with that. You know, you then the parents get to know you and know that, hey, that, that's a cool guy. That's a good guy. He's giving back to the community. Oh, what's he do? Oh, he owns the shop down the street. Well, I think I'll try him out. He's such a good guy. You know, so it's, it's not just the kids. You got to reach out into the community. And then those parents that you just may be impressed they may think about little Billy or Susie going, wow, look at the size of that shop. Look how clean their guys are. Look at the equipment that's in there. Uh, that that must be a good career. And well, you, The guys that work there drive nice cars. The guys that work there live in nice homes. The guys that work there can afford nice stuff. Yeah. Well, when I when I talk to parents at any of the career days, I tell them, I says, if you, if you have a child that has the aptitude to do what we do and has the mechanical mindset, Give them to us for two years through an apprenticeship program. They will be earning a life-sustaining, family-sustaining wage within two years. Will never be laid off of their entire career, and their and their advancement is almost open to anything with what's going on with electronics today. They could be the leaders in the, any of the trades as far as money-making opportunities go. I don't say it that way. That was just ad-libbed a little bit. But the point is the parents need to understand it's a great career choice. So, Carm, let's bridge a gap between what Bill said and what Andy said. So Bill talked about the difference between the first graders and the fifth graders. Andy talked about how important it is to make an impression, to be out in the community. How would it be if you're the only independent, because the dealers aren't going to do this, but you're the only independent that goes to all the schools. Now you're following Brad from first grade. Now you're seeing him in second grade. Now you're seeing them in fifth grade. Now all of a sudden, there is a relationship that starts. And, and that is the seed that you are marinating and you are watering. And it is an investment. But I'm telling you, it will pay off in droves. And uh, it's actually very rewarding because they start to recognize you. Um, it was to the point where, and I don't want to toot my own horn, but you know, it, we I own Sun Automotive. Well, internally, uh, we have the Sun Performance Team, so only the employees get the shirts and the swag. And whenever we go anywhere, we all pull up in the Sun Automotive stuff. 
we're all wearing our stuff because we're all part of kind of like this bigger culture, this undercurrent of like, well, who's the center performance team? And, and it's, I did that because of the interest generated in the youth uh, to start questions, to, to be optimistic, to have fun with it. And it really does, it takes a lot, right? It takes a village to raise these kids, but it's our turn to get involved and, and uh, influence them and we can do it. I'm, um, I am, it seems like every single town hall academy that we have, uh, I'm passionate about the topic. We bring on incredible panelists, but at the end, you guys always bring, everybody who's ever been on the show brings an A game. And, and there's no doubt today was an A game. And Andy, to Andy's point, and to, to all of your points, first grade, second grade, follow them through. Okay, hmm, well, I've got a lot of years to invest in doing that. Oh, I see, a dozen years from first to 12th grade. No, start, start at five, start at one, and work that through. But go out to the automotive classes if there's any in any high schools that are left you got to go to the lab and you got to go to the college to your college labs and you got to hang out andy you said it you got to hang out because the dealerships they're buying the stuff they're putting their name on things but they're not spending time with the students and we have to do that as independents and the best part is if they do send somebody it's somebody that doesn't relate to the student. They, they, they send an office person, you know, well, they, they don't and, send a tech out there. And right? why are they there? Because yeah. they were told to go. Exactly, Bill. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I, I was just at the, I was just at the Tri-C facility uh, uh, for uh, about two months ago because of the break, of course, three months ago now with the break. And uh, the dealership guys had nothing to say. The students were asking Bill and I all the questions. Because we're the guys saying, oh, yeah, oh, the dual cams in with this cam phasers at, you know, I mean, we could talk to talk. The dealership guys were just there because the bills that they had to be there and they're making a presence and they're donating money, you know. But, but that was like, you know, that, you know, the, the dealership I, and Carm, I don't know if I touched this on the last show. So we had the last time Bill and I were there was all the classes together. There was 25 students in there and I, and I talked about careers. I answered questions for 45 minutes and this and that. And at the end, I literally asked, I says, okay, all you, all you students who is totally happy going through their training program at the facility they're working at right now, are you getting everything you think you should need out of working at the facility you're at now? And 99, 98% of the kids are working at car dealerships because that's that's the Ford program. That's the GM program. You know, it's the BMW program. There's the Volkswagen program. It's in all their kids there. Two kids raised their hands out of 24. And I literally just said, okay, the rest of you, you're probably working at the wrong place. You need to look for another career path that's going to fulfill your needs and advance you the way you need to be advanced in our industry. So we know the dealership side of the aisle the, the flat rate program and the way they run their system is not conducive to building a family. And Craig touched on his culture is a huge, huge thing today. You know, it's always been there. Now it's absolutely important. You know, we could do a whole show on the culture of a shop, you know, and the culture of uh, the shop. And, and Craig, you had your, your son team. Yeah. We have our radio rising stars. We're in the young racing, you know, so uh, we, we bring them into the racing field. Uh, in that form. but uh, but yeah, so we got the upper hand if we put the time in. So, Carm, I'll end it with this real quick, and this is a this is an interesting one. We talk about technology, and we talk about how we can influence others. Don't forget that the class that we're in front of, they have 1.5 siblings at home. We don't know their age, we don't know their range, but they can have influence over the older kids. They, they communicate with their cousins, they communicate with their neighbors, and all of a sudden the chatter becomes widespread, right? One, they, I tell two friends, they tell two friends, and just because it's a fifth grader, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden Johnny, who's my older brother, who's a junior, now wants to talk to you about being an apprentice. So that's the watering. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Uh, this was great. Bill, uh, any, any final words, uh, anything we didn't cover? You know, this is everybody's responsibility. Step up and do your part. Yeah. Uh, how, how true. Uh, I'm th thank you. I I'm, 
I motivate. I love a Sun uh, Sun Automotive, right? Uh, the per, you call it the performance sun, team. The sun performance team. Yeah, and then the, the tagline instead of, um, you know, our normal tagline just says "just plain fast." They all ask about that. Is it plat fat? What's fast? <laughs> cool. And, and, and again, there's a takeaway for people to uh, to designate. You know, if you will, that elite status, or if it's not elite, but the whole team is in it because you're in the family, then that's the different brand. It's it's a, it's a secondary brand, but it's belonging. And, and and I think we, by the way, talking to a couple of guys that I know here in Buffalo that are shop owners that will hang out at the labs. They know a whole lot more than these kids are being taught. And they know some shortcuts that they're not being taught. And they're asking questions about, yeah, how does that work? And, and now the dialogue starts. And, the, and the, the, uh, it's not like they're there to recruit. They're there to make an impression. And the impression will become ultimately someday, just like you said, my, my, my brother, my sister, my, my friend who's working at this place, they need to talk to a guy like you. Because they're not happy where they are. Now I know that you you may be filling the ranks, but planting the seeds is what this episode was about. Thank you for Craig and Andy getting out for Bill all your service with the North American uh, Council of Automotive Teachers in the past. And I failed to mention that Andy is also chairman of Max, the Mobile Air Climate Systems Group. And we did a great episode with him and Peter Cole, who is their executive director. Man, you are so smart on air conditioning. I can imagine that you could dazzle young people on, on climate controls. You know, it, it, in its simplest form, air conditioning is very simple. I mean, we, we take a, a gas, turn it to liquid, we absorb heat, then we push the heat out and turn it back to gas. You know, so it, it, once you explain it that way to the students and they can't realize that, you know, it's changing states. That's something they've learned in science class. You know, you got water freezes and water melts, you know, and it's changing a state. That's And that's all an air conditioner really does. Does it a lot more technical than that, but in the simplest forms, you, you break down the stuff to the to bites that these kids understand and, and you got their attention. And when you do that, you remove the mystery. Right? That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Isn't, isn't physics heat to, heat to cold, right, Andy? I guess, yeah, you, that would be physics, I would imagine. Yeah, it's physics. It's heat to cold, right? Yeah. So, so when you, I, I believe when you open up the refrigerator door, the cold doesn't come out, the heat goes in. I, I believe that's how that transfer works. And I, I learned that a long time ago. But if you could take some of those concepts, to, you know, some of these young people, and just cover that and let them walk away with something right. that they would have never learned. Because anyway. that's why heat rises, right? So the atmosphere is cold and, and warm air rises. <sighs> okay, Bill, you can do the weather for me, baby. I love that. Well, I don't I know just... that I want. Hey, I'd never be wrong if I was the weather, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Thank you all so much. Uh, Bill Haas, uh, uh, Haas Performance Consulting, Andy Fiffick, CEO, Rad Air, 10-store franchise Cleveland, and the chairman of Max. And Craig Noel, CEO, Sun Automotive Springfield, Oregon, four-store operation. Loves to get in front of students. Thank you, guys. I, I think we got a lot of how. And, of course, we know the reason why. But we needed to come up with these great ideas to push and motivate the people that are saying, hey, Karma, I, I'm, I'm, I'm learning how to slow down. And, I, and, I, and I'm really trying to work from home from one day and then maybe two days. And I got a great team. Well, what am I going to do in those time, that extra time that I have? And so, yes. There may be a hobby, spend time with the spouse, but there's also getting out and talk to the kids. Yep. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it, Carm. You.